My guest, Lydia Merrill, was raised in an inner city church where she saw the power of God. She would see addicts, drunks, prostitutes stumble into the church, and the pastor, her grandfather, would pray for them, and she would see many instantly delivered from addictions, healed and saved. But even with this demonstration of God's power at such a young age, Lydia battled what many of you are battling right now, fear, and she desperately needed her own encounter with God. But at age 11, Lydia, what happened? Sid, I tell you the truth. I grew up in such a wonderful family, Pentecostal family. My grandfather was the pastor, and we had seen God move in some powerful ways. My grandfather commonly moved in miracles when I was a little girl. But you know, the church became cold and hard and religious. I often say that religion is when you think you can carry on having church without God. There was nothing real happening in the room. Lives were not being transformed. And to be honest, with you. We, we had an outbreak of sin in the church huh. from the same people. They were singing the songs. They were giving their $2 offering, Sid. They were listening to the messages, allegedly, and they were, you know, in Jesus' name, amen. But nothing real, nothing transactional with God was happening in their life. There was no correlation from Sundays to what was happening the rest of the week in their life. And we just became so dead and dry. I noticed that the altars, that we used to pray in when I was a very little girl. We'd have altar services, people praying and crying out for God, you know, asking God to encounter them, and they would experience Him and get up, and there you would see the glory of God on their faces. The altars just stopped. There was no real prayer. There was no real waiting for the Lord. It just wasn't happening anymore. And in that moment, a friend of my dad's, a pastor friend, told my daddy, he said, man, there's this revival that's broken out in Pensacola, Florida at Brownsville Assembly of God. You have got to go check it out. And he said, people are shaking under the power of God. They're falling out under the power, all these crazy supernatural things. And my dad said, I wouldn't cross the street to see that because he didn't want one more chill bump experience. He wanted something real. And the, his friend said, at this point, the revival has only been going a few months. At this point in the revival, about 5,000 people have been totally transformed by the power of Jesus. And Dad said, this I got to see. And we went to Brownsville for the very first time. Tell me just briefly yeah. this fear that you battled. You know, I didn't even realize it at the time, but it was a three generations worth generational curse of fear on my life. I am uh, I am third generational Pentecostal preacher, but when I was a little girl, you know, everybody in my family's in ministry. Everybody preaches, prophesies, leads worship, gets on a platform. Everybody can sing or play something. I was the child that hid behind the pew, and I would just shake. And Sid, I can remember when I was a little girl, and I used to say in my bedroom to the Lord, I said, I know that you have called me. I know that you have something for my life, but I cannot do this. I don't want you to take your hand off me, but I can't do what you've called me to do. I was so paralyzed. I wanted nothing to do with it. I would try, and I would completely shut down. I just could not do it. But that first night when we went to Brownsville, we had never met anybody in that building. Nobody knew who we were. And when Pastor Steve Hill gave the all Called, we saw a thousand people give their lives to Jesus just like that. And then he said, we want to pray for every one of our first time visitors who wants prayer. If you want a fresh touch from God. And honestly, this service had been going on now for three and a half, four hours. And I was uh, about 11 years old, just <laughs> short of my 12th birthday. My little brother, Philip, he was eight years old. My mom was done with us being done. We were all exhausted. And my dad, he said, well, I'm going to go down and get prayer. I'll just go down by myself and you can take the kids. Mom said, yeah, I'm just going to stay back with the kids. My dad took three steps down the aisle of that sanctuary, and he spun around on his hill, and he said, no, we came as a family. We're getting prayer as a family. We did not think it was awesome. We were annoyed, but that was the sentence that set us up for the greatest change of life we had ever experienced. When we went into that altar, Pastor Steve Hill was given a housekeeping speech. You know, don't let anybody pray for you, pray for you that's not on the prayer team. He totally spins around. He didn't know us from Adam's house cat turns around and says to my dad, he said, sir, the anointing is raining all over you and your family. And my dad said, okay. 
<laughs> you know, like, oh my goodness, what's happening? I'm thinking, oh my gosh, the crazy guy's yelling at us now. This was crazy. <laughs> but he turns around and he said, no, I said the anointing is raining. He came running off the platform and he put his hands on my face. He said, sis, the anointing is all over your life and that's what's going to carry you through. And immediately the heavy glory of God came upon me. I, I lost my legs. This was no courtesy fall. I went down under the glory of God. It felt like an elephant sat down on my chest. I was sat there and what I did not realize I knew I felt the presence of God. I knew I didn't know it was glory. I didn't know the terminology, mm -hmm. but I knew I felt peace. I knew I felt the love of God. I knew I felt a heavy presence of God. And what I didn't realize is God was extracting that fear off of my life. When I got up three off that generations floor, three generations, fear. when I got up off that floor, Sid, it was nothing for me to pray, to preach, to prophesy, to lead worship. It was nothing. I was totally, completely transformed. People that knew me could not believe how free I I got in that moment. You know, I want to see if you have any fear of seeing it. The three generations of fear. Her greatest gift, the devil put this fear on her and she couldn't even walk into. Prove to me you can sing. All right. Release the fullness of your spirit. Your kind of glory come. The glory came. Okay.